So you're studying for step one and you don't know where to start. This is the right video for you. Hi, my name is Anu and I am a medical graduate from St. George's University. And like you, back in 2019, I was wondering where to start as well. Before we go ahead, make sure you subscribe and make sure you share this video with someone and also be sure to like it. So let's go right ahead. The first tip I have for you is to consolidate all your resources. The trinity of step one studying is UFAP, as I'm sure you know. That's U World, First Aid, and Pathoma. And for me, those were my main resources. And I would recommend that you do not use more than three main resources. I had to supplement every once in a while with a Boards and Beyond video if there was something I had forgotten, or sometimes I would find myself rewatching sketchy micro videos because that helped me during my basic sciences years to learn micro. So I would rewatch it every once in a while. But mainly my resources were UWorld, First Aid, and Pathoma. And it is important for you to use these resources effectively as well. With UWorld, UWorld is both a testing and it's also a studying tool. So if you're not yet weeks out from your exam, it's important to use UWorld as a studying tool. And I have a whole video coming out soon on how to use UWorld effectively. Also, First Aid, for me, I needed a book to write. And I know some other people don't need it, but I am analog that way. So I needed a book to kind of write all the things I was learning from UWorld and from Pathoma. So I used first aid as that for me. I also read first aid cover to cover. Okay, maybe not cover to cover, but like past the acknowledgements to before the last couple of pages of first aid. And I needed Pathoma because my path knowledge going into dedicated step studying was not the strongest and I knew that. So I needed Pathoma to supplement that. And so for me, UFAP worked. Now for you, it may not be UFAP, but I would definitely recommend that U World and first aid be major staples in your main resources. This is very important. Don't use too many resources. Like I said, three is the maximum as your main resources and it's okay to supplement every once in a while. Plus, you know yourself, you've done so much to get this far. So clearly, you know your studying strengths and you know your weaknesses. So make sure you play to that as well when you're choosing your main resources. The second point, take a step one course if you can. And this is especially for IMGs. A lot of IMG schools out there don't follow the USMLE curriculum in general. So if you fall into that category, then I would recommend that you take a step one course. It may be expensive, but think about it as investing into your future. For me, I went to St. George's University, so we followed the USMLE curriculums, but I also felt like I needed a bit more in order to get me where I needed to be to be able to take the step one exam. And so many other classmates of mine also felt the same. I did my USMLE prep course with Delphi in Chicago. At that time, I did a four weeks course in person in Chicago and it was very expensive because of you know, living accommodations and all of those things and finding food to eat. But now with COVID and everything happening in the world, Delphi is now offering a six weeks online course in preparation for step one and step two. And so I would definitely recommend that to you. With Delphi, you work directly with Dr. Roy, who is the owner of Delphi. And he is a board certified physician who has trained hundreds of students into taking step one and step two and he has good testimonials and he's very approachable the class sizes are small so you can always get that one-on-one -on -one time with him he uses first aid as his main resource book so you don't have to think about having to finish that book as well as first aid and that's very helpful it was very helpful for me as well a friend recommended delphi to me i went i did not regret it and now i'm recommending delphi to you as well if you need more information about delphi or what kind of options they offer, please go ahead and reach out to me via my Instagram or in the comment se section. I never can say section, right? Or reach out, to <laughs> reach out to me in the comment sections on Instagram or in my email. And all the information is below in my description box. The third tip is to use medical podcasts. This is such a great idea for those times when you're tired of reading, you don't want to see another U world question, you don't want to see another diagram, you're like, I am done. Or when you're making a grocery run, you're going for a walk, you're just, you know, taking a break and you still want to learn passively or even actively, then I would recommend that you use medical podcasts. For me, I used Golgen Pathology because like I said, my pathology knowledge needed a bit more for me to get to where I needed to be. So I would recommend Golgen Pathology. You can Google that and I believe that there is a website that you can get it from. And another one that I would recommend, I did not use this for step one, but I used it for step two, is Divine Interventions Podcast. It was very helpful for me and I would recommend it for you as well. So, you know, in those moments where you're like, I don't want to read, you're still able to learn. With Divine 
Divine Interventions podcast, I appreciated the fact that he used questions to teach. And that, again, helps with you knowing how to approach questions for the exam. Of course, these are not main resources. These are just to supplement. And these are just for those times that you just don't want to read. The fourth tip I would give is to take breaks. This one is so important. It is so, so important for you to take breaks. You are not a machine. I will say it again for those in the back. You are not a machine. You need to take a break. I know that, you know, we have so much to cover and so much knowledge to gain, but it's still important for you to give yourself a break. I used um, Cram Fighter to schedule for my step one. I will leave the link below, but I made sure that every Wednesday for me was a catch up day and then every second Sunday was a break. And honestly, looking back, I wish I had given myself more breaks because you're studying day to night. You know, you need to give yourself and your brain time to recuperate and you can take a weekday off. It could be weekly. It could be bi-weekly, not bi-weekly. It could be once every two weeks. But do what works for you, but it is important that you're taking a break as much as possible. You don't want to be going into step one defeated in your mind. You want to make sure your mind is also together because as much as step one is a knowledge exam, it also is a mental exam as well. So make sure you eat well, exercise, get sleep, and rest well as much as possible. And lastly, it is important for you to take NBME exams. I cannot emphasize this enough because NBME exams, I believe, are written by the same body that writes the STEP exams. I would recommend that you take at least two NBME exams. I think they're about $60 an exam, which can be a lot and can add up, but I would recommend that it, you take at least two. And why do I say that? I say that because it is important for you to know where you stand when you first start. So take an MBMB exam at the beginning of your dedicated period so you know where you are at. And then you should also take one towards when you're about to write the exam. See where you stand, where you stood before and where you are now. One thing I love about the MBMB exams is that it gives you a breakdown of all the different systems and subjects and you know it lets you know how well you did on certain questions compared to others and so you're able to tell what your weaknesses and what your strengths are and those things that you need to focus more on. Also it is somewhat of a predictor of what you will actually get on the exam so it is important for you guys to you know take those if you can. I mean save money and take them it is important at least two if you can do more do that but also keep in mind that i believe it's only five nbme exams that are available for step one so keep that in mind i think i did my dedicated study period ended up being about 12 weeks long so i believe i did one every two weeks up until the exam and i use the u world self-assessment as well so it's 200 questions multiple choice and it's for an hour 15 minutes do it. So those are my five major tips for preparing for step one. If you have any questions, please leave them below in the comments or send me an email or send me a DM. All the information is below in the description box. And, you know, good luck with studying for step one. If you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. Share this video with somebody because it could really help a medical student who needs it or just somebody who's curious about medical school. And make sure to leave a thumbs up because it encourages me. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.